So in the last video, we got to the point where we had deployed our, or configured our storage class and configured a CSI or a CSI driver for EBS storage. So there's a couple of bits that we need to do now next in order to get to a point where we can deploy some real pods or some real workloads. So you can see our storage class here. All right, so next up, we want to deploy our PVC. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll upload our PVC YAML, a persistent volume claim, pointing to that storage class. So here we go. So there we see the YAML. I'm just going to add S to a working directory there. You can see it. Let's cat to it just to make sure everything is up, up and as should be. And there we go. All right, so you can see the storage class name, EBS-SC, and there's the name pod-1-claim, which we'll reference in our pod YAML. Clear out of that. Okay, so no PVC yet, right? Obviously, because we haven't deployed it. But here's our pod YAML, all right? So let's clear out of that. It's so just a little basic, or a little small application. So you can see that there, ppdm demo pod one yaml So we're going to deploy both of these in our new namespace in a second. But you can see the YAML file here. It's a little CentOS. It does exciting stuff like uh, uh, cursively spit out the name, uh, the time and date. All right, so press storage, and there's my, our, my PVC claim. So we're going to create that new namespace. Already created if you're, if you're uh, attentive. All right. So we can see that there, geo-ppdm namespace. And now we're going to kubectl apply both our persistent volume claim and our new pod to that namespace. Just that namespace so it's easier for us when ppdm pulls out or connects to the environment that we can protect that specific namespace. So our PVC has been created. Now we see here when we get our PVC or take a look into it, you can see that it's 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 in pending state until a pod attaches to it or makes that claim. Right. So next up, we'll deploy our kubectl apply minus f our pod YAML. Into the namespace. So that's pod created. Let's see if it's up and running in a second. Which it is, so that's good. It's a pod one up and running. So let's deploy a second one here in a second, right? Pod two using the same persistent volume claim. And you can see here the access node is read write only, read write once only, right? So we could get lucky here in a two node environment whereby we're applying this to the same node, so we will get away with it. I know we will because I've done this, right? So it's my voice over in the video. And okay, so pod two, so there we go. So let's apply this and see is our pod two come up. Let's see a namespace. And yes, it does. Well, it's created anyway. So let's just keep cuddle, get pods. And there we go. All right, so both pods up and running in that new namespace we created. So as I said, we got a little lucky there perhaps in the two node cluster. Right, so we're going to set this context. The current context is actually that, right? But it normally would be default. And we're going to test does our application actually uh, generate any data. So that gets pushed to our new volume that's sitting on EBS, right? So that, that EBS, that data we want to back up and recover. And you can see here it does, right? So really exciting, some really exciting data. So which brings us on to the next part of the video, which we're going to, as I said, we're going to, I know I've, I've detailed blogs around this, um, but we're going to stand up 
uh, a simple PPDM DDV environment, and then connect back into the Kubernetes cluster. so you can see the time of date there and so on. So just a little bit of data. And then pod two, so pod two's up and running. So we're all good. So next up, we'll deploy from CloudFormation, uh, PPDM and DDD. Now we do this in one step, so this, this CloudFormation stack will do both. Uh, so I'm not going to dig into too much detail here because I've done this on a previous, extensively on a previous set of blog posts. Um, suffice to say here is <clears throat> this will configure both, it will stand up both, and it will also do the basic connectivity between PPDM and DDD, create the file system, uh, and attach to the backend S3 data store. Uh, we'll see that in a second. All right, so we just fill out the CloudFormation script as per normal. I won't go through the whole lot, I'll just skip through some. Just be careful of passwords and so on. All right, so the, the, the IAM roles and everything, I'm assuming they've already been done. Um, your S3 bucket, one thing to note here is your S3 bucket. When we get to the bottom of this script, I won't show it in the video, must be empty, all right, and must exist. Okay, so if it's empty, you can run the script, it will work. Uh, sometimes, but um, it will fail to do the connectivity between PPDM and DVD. All right, just your password stuff here. Let's get through this fairly quickly. And if by magic, right, so that I've done that, it's done, the stack is complete, you can see that here. It takes a couple of minutes. Um, we're back at DC2, and by magic, as I said, everything is up and running. So we have two PPDM and DDV machines here running on EC2. It's for the stack. We're just going to grab the private IP addresses here. Um, we'll head over then in a second, we'll, and we'll browse HTTPS 443 to both PPDM and DDV. Now, the EULAs have been accepted and all that kind of stuff. Um, skip over some steps. Again, this is just to, just to jog some memory. Right, and there by magic, Power Protect Data Manager, 2.29. I'll just log in here. There we go. So we see storage there. Data, data domain itself. <clears throat> so admin and our password. See your file system is up and running. All right, the critical alert there is for a user for a security, it's a security alert. So it's okay for now. So sys is enabled, NFS is enabled, DD boost is enabled, replications enabled. You can see my file system over there on the right. And you can see the source, the cloud provider is AWS, and the bucket name. All right, so that's all good. Entry is there. Just got a quick scan of protocols here in a second. TV boost and so on. Okay, so that's actually nice. It's, it's kind of super, it spins it up automatically. Just run through a couple other bits and bobs. my assets on my storage and my asset manager there. Asset sources. Storage. And we can see the storage is actually DD domain. DDV. That's from Power Protect. Alright, we just pause out of that and we go back into our EC2 console. Just let's jump into S3 here. Uh, it's just nice to note here that you can see that actually my bucket has been populated with a file system, or with objects rather. So you can see it here. 
there's my my bucket and you can see yeah so there's stuff in the bucket right so it's been populated and we're good to go Right, so just a quick recap of where we're at. Right, so on the previous post, we deployed EKS, right, on AWS, and we created our cluster, Geos, PPDM, EKS, and we created our CSI. We did we configured the CSI um, for connectivity to the persistent storage, or EBS back storage, so you can see our data store there. All right, this, this video or this blog, what we've done is we've created a namespace, created our pods with a little bit of workload, and we created a PVC or the persistent volume claim to that to that storage, that backing storage. All right, so we have data somewhere. Right. Um, second part of the video, of course, is we spun up Power Protect Data Manager and Data Domain Virtual Edition as part of that Cloud Formation template. Now that Cloud Formation template did some nice stuff for us in that it connected the uh, PPDM to Data Domain Virtual Edition. Uh, created a file system and so on, but also exposed our backend Amazon S3 uh, data store. All right. Of course, now we have the piece on the left and we have the piece on the right. Now we need to figure out how will we connect one to the other in order to protect our data and get that data into the Amazon S3 store. So that's the next part of the video upcoming. Right, so the first thing we do is we're just going to grab the YAML files for RBAC to configure RBAC and the secrets and so on in, in our for EKS cluster in order to allow PPDM interact with uh, or talk to the API for, for EKS, right? So I said everything on AWS rather is permissions based. Um, so this is just carrying on that theme, right? So this is in the blog here, so it's very straightforward. Download to your local machine, extract, and we'll go into our Cloud Shell environment and we'll upload the files. See, these are my local machine. So ppdm controller yaml is the first. Open and upload, very straightforward this. I've done this before. Upload the second file. PDM dash discovery dash YAML. And after they're uploaded, just to do a quick check that they're there, and then we'll execute them using kubectl apply minus F. And then we'll generate our secret. Paste in our commands. Right, so once they've executed, then we want to run another special command that's in the blog. We want to see what that secret is, and we'll use that to create our user in PPDM to allow that role-based authentication back into the EKS cluster. All right, so there we go. You can see service account token is created. Let's clear out of that there, and let's grab that token. So grab that big long character list. We'll stick that into Notepad. We'll use that as our first piece of information in a second when we have PPDM. Just save that there for a second. All right, we'll go back into our cloud shell. Just grab the second. So now when the second piece of information is the certificate authority uh, info we need. So again, just another command here that's in the blog. Just put, put the cert. Just made a mistake there with the geos ppdm eks eks one Grab that information, save to the, uh, add to our notepad. Okay. Our piece of information is we need the actual API endpoint, right? So we're going to point two from PPDM, right? So that's kubectl cluster info. We grab that address there at, uh, uh, without the HTTPS colon for slash for slash header. And we just save that there. So my API is redacted there. So I'll see it play it right out. And the final piece then, of course, is our, is our EKS cluster name. 
and we'll just save that there as well and head over to EPDM. The first thing we're going to do here is, right, you'll just see is that we have we have a Kubernetes asset source, but we've no asset sort or asset, but we've no asset source created or we've no credentials. The first thing to do is create a list of Kubernetes credentials. Kubernetes, give it a name, this can be anything. Our service account token. Now this is the first piece of information we, we gather. Just copy that. And it goes. Have a quick peek here so we didn't pay something different. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's token type information. Now add our add our asset source. So add so the name, which will be our EKS cluster name. Our uh, FQDN, which is our API endpoint. Now it's 443 for EKS, so we're just going to change that. Our host credentials that we've just created, all right, and the last piece are advanced options. So we need to add the root certificate or the CA. You just copy and paste that. Just make sure that we don't have any dead white space above because that'll error out. Verify. For first and save. So save, the save action goes off and does the authentication to the EKS control plane. And that's worked, All right? So just give you to give it a little second, so unknown discovery status. So we'll just click on that in a second and we'll just we'll run through a discovery. So when we run through the discovery, it'll it'll discover all the resources underneath that cluster that are, are um, eligible for to apply a, a policy to. So here we go. All right, got around there. I could just move over to discover. <laughs> so there you go, discover. Yes. All right, so that discovery process kicked off. You can see our version of our cluster 1.28, 1.28. Discovery status is okay. And we'll flip over and we'll just go to our assets tab in a second. And here we can see, yep, indeed we have all our namespaces. And with that done, uh, in part four, next, we'll, we'll apply some policies in order to protect some data. Uh, so stay, stay tuned and thanks for your time.